put the soul into it, baby. We're putting soul into a painting today and it's called soul. I want you to watch this because it's going to be fun. It's on a black canvas. And then we're taking and swishing. We're just putting the soul into it. That's exactly what we're doing. I'm going to put a little more soul in before I get out of the emotion and then we'll come down and say what we're using. Okay, this is phthalo blue and white. Wham! Play them down there and we have some around there. And then we'll take phthalo green and white and do the same thing. You won't even see me go to the palette. Wham! It's stuck there. You saw me. I have to show you. I can keep the emotion. There's phthalo green and white, okay? Up to the canvas, right across the same places. Soul! And we'll put down where we're going to have a little bit of an eye of the wave, maybe a distant one. And there we are. Oof. How do you like it so far? Let me tell you a little story. I walk, I've walked, I went across the country, and as I'd go to these various cities, I'd often go to, uh, often I'd go every Sunday to church. And in the church, in the foyer, they have, would have a painting done by a local member of the president of the church. And I'd look at that and I'd think, what a poor representation. That's a great loving man. They should do a great job on him. But then I came home and I saw my three-year-old grandson painting the same man. And when I looked at that, I said, what a great painting. Look at Tyler. He's painting there. He's putting the soul in to this same drawing. And I said, what a beautiful job. Why it was beautiful? Because he put love into it. And then I quickly retraced, repented. It could have been the same motive for all the people painting those paintings across the country in the foyer. They did it with love. And that's the only motivation you need. If you do that, then let the critics fall away. Okay? We're going to have fun. Now let's go down the palette and show you what we're using. We're using phthalo green and white. And I used uh, this as part of the soul painting, phthalo blue and white. We're going to have a kind of a deep north painting with a lot of trees and rays and water. See, I know what's going to be there. It isn't just doing it from, from imagination. We have some trees which will be made from black and phthalo green. That's equal parts. And then we add yellow for the light on the trees. And we'll go even lighter with a little yellow and white. Foam color, blue and th that's phthalo blue, and black, equal parts, into white. Yellow, ochre, and white, that'll be the highlights on our foam. And possibly some of the lights in the sky. We will need maybe one or two rocks. Burn umber straight. And then we have red, little yellow, ochre, and white which will be for the highlights on the rocks. Okay, well, go back to the canvas. Look what we have. We have something to work with, don't we? We have the sole there. I think what we'll do is just push around a little bit more paint, and we'll take, uh, this is the foam color, black and phthalo blue and white. But we'll go up to the sky with this, and just push this around a little bit, just to soften in slightly. It'll subdue a little bit all the emotion, but look how it blends in, how well it looks against this. If you put that same color on white, it wouldn't look the same. But when it's against those vibrant colors, it has a richer color too. Because it builds with what's near it. And think of that. If you do the same thing, if your neighbor is improved because of your presence near him, what a blessing. Okay, so you have a lot of soul and it'll spread. Push this around. I'll come in a little closer there. Let me just kind of tell you what we're going to have on the canvas. We have the sky. We have a large tree here. And then we're going to have a big wave coming in and hitting rocks at the base of the tree. And then we'll have a little island out there. I wonder what happened to our island. Well, it's good that it's wet. It's good that it's wet. And then when we put the dark in, it won't be quite as dark as the near trees. And that'll give us perspective. Perspective meaning, in this case, it goes lighter in shadows further away. Okay, what do we need? A little bit more down here because we have the horizon is approximately along here. We'll come over further and let's go ahead and put in some of the lights that go for the area coming down behind the tree. And I'll use a bunny brush. Love that brush. We'll take uh, yellow ochre and white, dry brush, and come up to the canvas. And this is all behind a tree that is yet to grow. We've just got seeds over here, and then it'll go, grow strong and massive. See how that comes down? And as you blend that, it'll thin into the blue a little bit, and you get some nice secondary rays, the ones that are out in the periphery. Boy, that's pretty. You know that the light's up there, don't you? It's right up there. 
Okay, we, because this is dry brush, we can go across like this and still retain most of that impact. That's the nice thing about dry brush, but at the same time, you're going wet on wet because the blue tone, the sole tone, is in there and is wet. Okay, let's come down and let's see, what do we do next? Let's go ahead and put some of the tree uh, that's against that light. Let's put that on. We'll use a fan brush and I'll go ahead and put a little bit of the clear medium on the brush and push into this because we need to have this walk out there a little ways. See how nice that is? That's going to be contrasty. Look what happens when you come to the palette and this is the area where it's going to go. What a contrast. It's nice sometimes to try it off canvas, try it on the palette, and if it looks good there, and then you go ahead and put it up where you want to have it. This will go a little bit here. See how you walk that over and you can gently touch those little almost finger-like feelings as it comes off the tree. Some of these can go up and some can go down. The trees grow both ways. We watch a little bit as we put this on so that you do maybe taper a little bit at the top, but it doesn't change too much, except at the bottom we can kind of flow a little bit again because we, we, we need to be careful. Well, speak positively. We need to have it just right. Okay, there we are. We'll come across there. I will hold off from doing the lowest ones until we put the foam in and then the trees will be, uh, yeah, the trees will be on this side of it. So we'll come down a little about there, stop, and then the foam, and then we'll come further with trees. I will go ahead and fill on the inside a little bit, though. This is with the black green, same fan brush. Push that around. Even though you're using a black canvas, we've put some of this on, so when we put the next paint on, it'll be wet on wet. I do want to have a little bit of the blue, the sole color, over on the left side of the tree, so it's filtering through a little bit there, too. So this is still fan brush, phthalo blue and white, and we'll come back over in the, on this side. Angle these strokes so you feel like the light's coming through. Boy, isn't that, isn't that fun? It is so much fun. You don't, listen, don't go do it yet. And don't try painting with me. If you're recording it, then play it later, but then watch it through a couple times and get an idea of what you want to do. Okay, there's no reason you can't, but if you can do it the other way, fine. But if you have to paint with me, then, then go ahead and do that too. Or check on your neighbor, they might have uh, recorded it. And then you can watch it again. Okay, let's uh, kind of go past the tree. The tree will still have some highlights on it, but we'll wait for, for doing that. It's, it's sort of fun to go on and do it all, and then here comes dessert. A little spice here, a little sugar there. Mm. We'll do that with the tree, we'll wait on that. I believe I'll put on the distant island. This is the same black and green and fan brush, but now watch as we do this, because this is, um, this is going to go lightly in there. It won't be quite as dark. You know, it makes me think of my little grandson. He keeps saying, watch, Grandpa, watch, Grandpa. So I'm doing the same thing to you. I'm saying, watch, watch. Of course you're watching. Push this around, and as you uh, do this, you watch the height. The height, so we go up just a little bit kind of uh, mush at the moment on purpose. And then once you get it about where you want to go, let's go a little higher and we'll take, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to take turps. Picked up little turps, same color, and then we'll go down just a little bit like this for distant trees. Might have a little bit like that. I'll take the twiggy long just in case we need to have a, a little more detail. Okay, up here, like that, a little more height there, a little bit there, a little bit here, a little bit there. So you have varying heights like that. Okay, the little edges go out just a little bit. See, I can, I can see those pretty good. You're doing a good job. It's always the pressure of somebody to replace you if you don't do a good job, isn't there? But let's work as a team. We'll both do part of it. Boy, I think that's really the secret. Pray for your buddy to do just as good as you do. I tell you, I want Bob Warren to be the best artist in the world. I want Bill Alexander to be the best artist in the world. Who's that other guy? Ashley Jackson, Lowell Spears, be the best. And I'll do the best I can. We're not comparing with anybody. Do the best you can. And then when you get up the pearly gates and knock, they'll say, were you the best buck you could be? They won't say, were you a Rembrandt? Were you a Da Vinci? They'll say, were you the best buck you could be? And I'll say, I was the biggest buck I could be. You bet. Okay, let's go on. We better get some of this done. We have uh, a little bit on the interior. I guess the twiggy, we, we took you along, we put a little dark up there, so why don't we just put just a little teeny little lines out there. That's very good. You do your job well, 
very well, and I do mind. Okay, we'll come down around like that. And then while we're out there, we will go ahead and put a little of the spice and sugar on that one. Let's come with the, uh, this is yellowish green. I'm going to come over with just a little extra yellow because that goes lighter more quickly than the near trees. Why is that? Because they're out in the light and this uh, big tree is in the shadow. See how you just kind of dance that around? It's the corner of the brush that's doing the dancing, doing the leading, and the other one's just following. That's great. And then a little bit down on the land, so you feel like there's a bank there and the trees are growing up from it. We can take a little bit of our yellow ochre and white. Let's put a little yellow into it too. See, I didn't clean the brush. It still has that little green flavor. And we'll come over and this will go, the light's hitting on the left side. A Little bit there too. And we'll do the same thing on the land. We'll have just a little light along there. Okay, let's go ahead down to the water because we got a few things to do. We'll take our big foam and put it on. Fan brush. I almost went to the medium. I think I'll go dry brush. And this is black and phthalo blue equal parts into white. Here comes my big wave. Vroom. Splash. Come over there. Push hard. Gently though, if I, if I feel it's going to rough, rough up the brush too much, maybe a little juice with it. That'll be better. And then just a little more pat gently. You can put soul in and you can also save a brush. Okay, we'll put this on, get a nice curve, have it reach in like that. This uh, area, it, I want a nice curve there, so I might just slice that away a little bit. Always thinking grace. Boom. And then a second wave, we'll put this out close to the island. And then we'll have a little one that's sort of packing against the island. And what do we have next? Great. Just like that. Here we are, pushing against that, pushing against over here. And we'll take the same color and we'll kind of swish back and forth on this. Now watch this. Same color, same brush. Just go like this so you get a little feeling of movement. And because we have, oh, we got quite a corner here. So let's, let's put another wave over in there like that. This needs to thin out a little bit as it goes mistily into the corner. This is going the same direction, but it's a little earlier than this one. He's leading the way. Every artist should have an assistant like that. Okay, we uh, can go ahead and soften this just a little bit. See, we put that in when we we're putting the soul in, but now it becomes the eye of the wave. Same feeling as this goes back in there. Okay, now that's nice. You've, we have put on the gleams in that, but to show the reflection from the sky, we need to have a little bit of blue and white, a little bit of the green and white, and we can take a little bit of those and just push those around just very gently, not much paint, just a little bit there, but you do get the reflection down if you do that, like that, and especially down in here, and over in the corner a little bit. Okay, I'm going to put on some foam patterns, and we'll use a twiggy brush, and what other brush? We might use a little bit of the uh, round brush, each of these, I'll, I'll take, um, each of these will need a little medium. So this is the medium, and we'll mix it right with the paint, about, just about equal parts, is that not? There we go. So let's load two brushes. This one loads the whole brush, because we lay that down and kind of wiggle it around. This one, well, it's just kind of a backup. Always good to have a backup. Okay, here we go. Watch this, uh, where to start with, I'll go, kind of careful like, very slow like. See how they fall along the same path as this wave is going? Make variety. Variety in this case would be a little wider, flatten it out. Variety in this case will also mean I won't go quite as high as this one. I'll curve this end over, whereas this one was just a, a clothes hanger. I better make you come over there. However, when you do these, they're going to look uh, a lot with a lot of busyness until we come and blend them a little bit and then maybe put a couple lighter ones on. Listen, I got so much soul. I got to wipe. Okay, that felt good. Okay, let's go ahead with some more of these. Push around. It, it's fun to paint something that you really love. You feel the emotion and the warmth from doing it. That's great. You know that you're doing the job when you feel good about it. When you get feelings for it, identify what you're doing. 
have feelings for people, appreciate nature. Oh, wake up every morning and thank God you can see, that you can use your hands, that you can walk, that you can hear. Oh, so many reasons to be happy. Okay, same idea here, but I'm just rushing a little bit because it's very repetitive to the work we did down below. And I want you to see it done up carefully in one area and then sort of fast in the others. I'll take, I guess I'm just using the one brush, but we're rushing over onto this side also. These all help give the feeling of movement to the ocean. And that's such an important aspect of the ocean. The um, direction of the wave gives uh, movement. The flow of the foam patterns gives movement. And then to get a little more the real character in there, you brush them slightly so you get a kind of a sheen. The foam is very loose and frothy. Softly like that. And then let's go over just a little bit to the left corner. Push this around. I'm going to take the same uh, bunny brush while I have it and just feather up a little bit. So that's uh, very gently done. Push right into here. Go right across the eye. So you, after, the more you paint on a painting, then you sort of get a touch of what, what you can do. If it dries a little bit, then you can go across areas that you think, well, it might be too wet. But you sort of touch it out in the pasture, and then if it's good, you come and do that in the, in near the shore. Okay, we'll go ahead and put some of the lights on the tree just to say we'll get that taken care of, and then we'll come to the real dessert, mm, the vanilla ice cream. Okay, we have black and sail green. That was a tree color. And then we use a little yellow into it. This won't be much lighter, but it's in the shadows of the tree. See, the light's not hitting there. So therefore, it's, a, it's darker than we have over there. But you do take some of this, and I'll do it in just a minute. We do take some of this and go out into the sky so that some of this softer green is out there too. Although the other color going out into it almost softened in the same color, didn't it? Just a little bit there. I, I still need to put the highlights on there before I can put that tree across, so I suppose we better do that next. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Okay, we'll take our big fan brush. In fact, it's the, also the small fan brush. It's the only fan brush I have right now. It works quite nice. This is yellow ochre and white. And this goes right in, let's see, with the light hitting there, you'll have a big clunk there, a clunk there. Oof, that's great. That's great because it's contrast, boom. You can do your emotion, if you know where it's going to go, boom, like that. Or you can take and say, I want it here, boom. See, it's a quiet emotion. It's still emotion, but you do it gently. And a little bit out here. And a little bit over there. And a little teeny bit, I'll borrow some of you and come down into here. I once painted uh, in Milwaukee, and this gal, I'm gonna blend this with, a, with just a blender. This gal was taking my class. She hadn't painted for six years. She was only 24. Why hadn't she painted for six years? Because when she was 18, is that right? Six and 18 is 24. That's right, okay. She hadn't painted for six years because when she was 18, she did this painting of beautiful flowers on a canvas and took it in and this judge looked at it and proceeded in front of all the people to tell her, don't you ever dare paint on black again. How dumb can you be? So I'm dedicating this to Gail in Milwaukee. You can paint on black. Gail, you paint on black anytime you want to. Black is beautiful. And there's no reason not to paint on black. There's a great book, and it, uh, The Art and Appreciation of Color, and it has a whole chapter on the use of black. Isn't that great? So you use it, use it well. But after the class, Gail's painting again, and she's doing a great job. And I can't criticize that fellow that kind of put her down, because maybe that's what he was told. It's so easy to uh, pass on things without knowing the reason why of not doing something. OK, what do we have? We have softness there. See how that splashes against there? We do want then to come down with the dark accents, the dark accents of the tree. And this is going to be black and phthalo green. Fan brush, same thing we've been doing along here, but now watch when that just gently comes out 
and you know that the foam is splashing against that area. Like that. See how that pushes that behind? I, I do want to have what? Just a little bit of a feeling of a rock here so you, you know it isn't just splashing against the tree. We'll take a sable brush, sable brush, burn number. Floor director, we got burn number, haven't we? Burn number. And I, I think at home, what you're, you're probably asking, do I have to use those colors? If I want to have a little more sunlight, could I do that? You certainly could. You could do this with a little uh, sunset out there. You could change the colors in any way you want to. We're showing you a technique and hope that it will help you in, in the path that you, that you decide to use it. You decide to travel. Okay, well, this is just bird number kind of pushed around and I'll come down. This is yellow ochre, uh, red and white, just to give a little vitality on the rocks. See, there's not a, light, a lot of light that would hit it, but it, it pushes that foam back just a little bit. Just slightly like that. And over here. And then for the feeling like uh, foam's coming off the rock slightly, I'll take my fan brush and we'll use the same black and blue, that's sailor blue and black equal parts, into white. And this will come splashing off, just off the rock slightly, so you get a feeling the previous wave, this one, has done left a little deposit at the, at the bank. Solid bank. And can we do anything else to that rock? Can we put just a little knife work on that? Ooh, just a little bit, just a little yellow ochre and white. Ooh, right in here. So the water is sparkling slightly. The light's just hitting down through the tree and just touching that a little bit. Sparkle at the bottom. Did you know what I had? I had just touched green on that. I like that. Okay, we're going to make purpose of that. Here's yellow ochre and white with just a touch of green. We'll put this down in the water. We'll use a knife to put it on. Make the same angles as the foam is flowing. And here we have a pretty good impact, just rushing back for this. Pretty good impact right there, because that's where the light, wham, straight down. A little bit back there. And then let's go ahead and put a little bit lighter light, oh, maybe a speck just down here, not much, but let's put a little lighter light into the eye in just a minute too. Okay, a little lighter light in the eye. We have the mop brush patiently waiting there. Dry brush. And we come up to <laughs> right in the eye, right in your eye. Pat that around. And then we'll take some of this and just go whoom, right out there. So we make just a little softness so that wave is further away detaching from the front one. To help this flow a little bit more, let's go ahead and put a fan brush. We'll take some uh, black green. This is the same color that we have for the trees. Now this will come down. I'm, I'm going to use a little medium because I'm going to use it <clears throat> a couple places. The first place I'll use it is where it's already dry, so we get a little more of an accent there. I decided to use it here and keep it purely on the brush before we come into uh, any of the wet area. That, that's, that's just about enough. Just a little more accent there, a little bit down here, so it contrasts against that big light. And then I need some more. Here's where we come, right down there. You know, you, you, you at home have to realize how much I love you, how much I talk to you, right? But there's also special people in the booth today. I want to say hi to them. Good to see them, good to have them here. But you guys at home, you still watching, give you a little time, you catch up? Okay, here we go. Notice how we put in the black and green from the trees down to the big wave. And that right away makes the wave move. It moves right along there. After you do that, you might choose to have a little extra highlight down below the uh, dark water I just put on. Yellow ochre and white fan brush right along here, kind of a second wave. See, that dancey, isn't that? It's so important to have the rhythm. Put the soul in. You got it. You got it. When you got it, show it. That's, that's pretty good. This, uh, this is just a little awkward here, so I'll push some of that dark. We put that black green there, bar out from over there. The finger we have, the forefinger, four painting. There we go, right in there. Let's go ahead then and blend a little bit of the lower foam. This is with the bunny brush. I better throw away a paper towel. Use the next one. 
This is a nice paper towel. It's good on the brushes, and when we ever need to wipe anything on the canvas, it's kind of nice to have a good paper towel, lint-free. Okay, blend the same direction as you put on the strokes, which are kind of slanted. See that impact? Blend around here. I can blend that big wave a little bit now on the lower part. We haven't done that before. Blend in here. Blend across there. See, even if I pick up a little green, let it come down in. It tones, tints the water a little bit. Same thing over here. I'll take some of this color, just touch into there so it's a little bit like that. Ooh, that, oh, that, that's serendipity. That was an accident, but it's just right. It gives you some of the color that should be there, that soft green. Take from there. Come on back here and push that in. We almost forgot. No, we were going to do it. But boy, I like that. It's nice when things come accidentally. Have that open mind that open spirit, and you can do it. So you have enthusiasm, but the enthusiasm is not such that it keeps you from learning. You know, it's not only your own way. It's when something comes and it's a little better, you take it and it's yours. Let's take just a little stroke, this yellow ochre and white, the bunny brush, and we'll go out to the distance here because we're a little uh, needing some of this for a balance. I have to tell you one last story, and this goes along with this painting. I painted a painting once, something like this, and took it over and showed my teacher, and he says, oh, I love that. He says, this was on a Friday, he said, would you leave it here for the weekend? And I did. And the next day, a gal came for a private lesson, and she says, do you mind if I turn that painting around? It depresses me. See, the same painting could go both ways. So it's the same way when you see something. You don't really judge it as uh, whether you like the color or not, or whether you like it. Think as we said, as we started the program, what was the purpose of the person doing it? If they had love for it, then allow them the privilege of doing it. I'll tell you one thing. I love you. I'm going to show it each and every week. Be the best 